Chancellor's Log, April 4th, 1939. Our task force of battleships and battle cruisers sent to the Mediterranean encountered something far larger than expected. Half the Austro-Hungarian Navy. Our seven ships sunk all but a few of the Austro-Hungarian battle group. They lost 60 ships. After this encounter, the Austro-Hungarian ambassador practically burst through the doors of the Reichstag. Disheveled and rattled, he requested a meeting with me, urgently. I decided to let the man simmer. We had just delivered a massive blow against the Austro-Hungarians, so surely this ambassador could wait. I decided to have him brought in after two hours of waiting. These two hours of waiting clearly didn't do the man any favors. He had dark stains under his armpits and he was struggling to find the words. Herr Kanzler, the Austro-Hungarian Empire is willing to sign an unconditional peace treaty. Please accept our offer. It was an interesting position to be in. We had just decimated the Austro-Hungarian navy and we clearly shook them to the core. Should I press our advantage or accept a peace? I decided to do the latter. With a peace treaty in place, we can focus on the British and Italian issues first. Austria-Hungary will also be forced to pay a large sum to us in reparations. With these funds, we can have new ships built specifically to counter the Austro-Hungarian ships. They will essentially be paying for the ships we will use in the next war against them. I told the ambassador that we would accept their peace treaty. And so, this war against the Austro-Hungarians was a very short one. We lost one ship, they lost 72. We've been paid adequately and we've cut their navy in half. That is a good resolution to this conflict. And now, back to focusing on the British blockade. Hey guys, still here, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. It is episode 43 of the Big Guns campaign, and we just signed a peace treaty with the Austro-Hungarians. Why? Well, I want to make sure I can still focus on what is happening with the British. I can't really have my fleet engage the Austro-Hungarians and, at the same time, be busy with the British. Because I need my fleet around the British Isles to make sure they slowly shrink. Now, peace has been signed. Um, I can get battle cruisers. I'm not particularly interested in inheriting their ships. Because overall, I found them to be old and somewhat lacking. I mean, 109, oh, sorry, 94 million for a battleship is not bad. My battleships are just vastly better than whatever crap the AI designs. And sadly, you cannot get any territories, at least not currently. What I can get is 293 million, which I think is nice to get. So, that's that done. Uh, it also means I stop losing transport in the Eastern Med, because I don't have any conflict with the Austro-Hungarians, and my power projection is fairly similar to that of the Italians. Uh, the Italians... yeah, they're still blocked. They're still blocked. Now, with that cash, I can once again pump up the amount of funding for research. Now, it was suggested I reduce this. Um, yeah. These funds increase the level of training for your crew. And it's only going to go up to trained. Let's spend a little less on this. Let's say set that to 65%. Whoa. Moving this needle is ridiculously expensive. Let's see. How much does it matter? Hull construction, currently 8 months. And destroyer design is 10. So 8 and 10. If you go max, you're looking at 5 and 6. So 8 and 10. This saves me 3 months here and 4 months there. It's not worth 350 million. So, no thank you. Instead, I'd much rather be pumping up the naval capacity. And... maybe not that much. Reduce this a bit. Research is so freaking expensive recently. There. I, can, I don't mind losing half a mil. Um, wait, what? There were a whole bunch of missions here. Now they're gone? What? What happened there? 
Wow, okay, something's going on with the missions. The hell? There is a British DD out there. There's a, three DDs there and another one there. Hmm. Do we have anything that can accept that? Mecklenburg. Ah, uh, why not? Have a go. Go do some sea control, please. And uh, anything else? Sending out the Heimdall with her 18s is a bit much. Her 5.9s are much more suited, so let's send out the Preussen and a whole slew of DDs. Where did those missions go? I don't get that. There was ambush, there was convoy, there was task force, all sorts of stuff, and now it's nothing? Oh, hold on. The IRC is not properly blockaded. Uh, can we send a... Yeah, we can send one DD. Most of our battleships took a bit of a beating. Send the Heimdall over there. There, off you go. What happened to those missions? This makes no sense. This makes no sense. Now we got missions. Good. You just have to hold the British down to make sure that they they don't escape. Ah, Leonidas wa Wager and Weasel against Heimdall. Still, 18-inch guns. We're just going to have to make those 36 5.9ers do something useful. And the 18s. If they hit, great. If not, well, so be it. High explosive, uh, save on this, normal on that. Turning circle on these ships is not good. Speed is okay. And when it comes to torpedo protection, they got an anti-torp too. They have radar too. They have RDF, they have sonar. I suspect I might spot the enemy before they spot me. Sure. So we got five of these tur whoops. <laughs> five of these six of these turrets per side. It's eighteen barrels. I say we just find the enemy and we turn broadside. If they're even interested in fighting. If they're just gonna run off, which I wouldn't fault them for doing, then uh, can't really do that much. Turns out the ships were 60, 65 clicks away. I can't catch that. Too far away. Um, the battle would probably just time out by the time the Heimdall gets there, even if she even gets there. So that is unfortunate, but it's fine. This is going to be far more easy to catch. Water Hen, 36.9 knots. Let's hope she's interested in a fight. No, let's alter resolve. I hope I don't lose a DD because of that. Light damage. Oh well, at least we make sure she's back in her dock. And then the destroyers against the Birmingham. There has to be some way to take the British apart faster than just bleeding them for, well, well over a year at this point. It's getting a bit crazy. Let's see, 36, these are all moderns. Yeah. These are all modern. Okay, loose formation. Find the DD, sorry, find the CL. I'd say we we're gonna pump it full of high explosive. Worked last time, might work now. Here we go. We have the CL somewhere at around seven clicks. They've seen me. C state is really poor. So this is gonna make battle for both sides quite difficult. Wow. Five clicks out and we can just see them. I do have more guns. I don't know if I can actually make those guns hit something. So, the second plan is to just try and torp them from various directions at the same time. Like now. Let's see if that will work. Come on, 36. Perfect time to launch. Nope, so they're turning. They are turning. Torpedoes in the water. Danger close on 35. Incoming on 40. 40 will pass that. We did destroy some of the torpedo launchers. Not enough. There goes another one. There. Their quintuples are offline. That means they have their single launchers. And they're definitely using them. Birmingham has hit one of my DDs. But not as badly as she was hit. Ooh, you took a torpedo. Dead. Wow. I think that was the first time I actually landed a torpedo on something. That not turned into a dud. Nice battle. Quick, smooth, I like it. 
I like it. Now, I do believe we're slowly but steadily approaching the end of the campaign, especially considering how badly the Italians and the Austro-Hungarians are doing. The Austro-Hungarians used to have well over 100 ships. They now have 81. It's not stopping them from building a whole bunch. They're still building 56 and repairing 26 more. The Italians are down to 17 ships. So... <laughs> <laughs> they're repairing 16. Uh, somehow they're able to still field ships and hold the Austro-Hungarians at bay. I'm not exactly sure how they're doing it. Supposedly the Italians have one... Ah, there's the task force. It's one CL. Right. I would love to cripple the Austro-Hungarian economy. I just have no idea how. My economy still isn't particularly growing. Let's pump a bit more into the economy then. Get more transports out there and continue. Now, something is something odds going on here. The blockade of the German Empire by the Italian Empire has ceased. Uh, no, this is the other way around. I am blockading them. So this tooltip is wrong. The Italians become stabilized, and so are the British. I don't exactly get why. Oh, now I'm blockading the Italians. Ooh, a battleship. A battleship. König. Get your guns ready, because we're going to fight. A battleship. Interesting. The British are full of surprises. Okay, 16 and 19. Please make your way to the stage. We're going to start with a high explosive spam. And the Mars, sorry, the König Wilhelm is going to be able to pitch in with her 15s. Maybe pen at long range, right through the deck armor, ideally. Oh, I've been detected. Already, there you are. Turn, turn. Mm, that's your heavy cruiser. Right? No, it's your light cruiser. They have pressure ship. Go for the battleship with the big guns. Have the small guns engage whatever this is. Oh great, we're sending single torpedoes out. Oh well. Come on now. Flooding. Is that a CL? It has to be because a battleship has, or sorry, a heavy cruiser has seven inch guns as the smallest caliber, I believe. 11% chance to hit with the big guns. I like it. Not really seeing the effects of it just yet, but hey ho. Uh, DDs and BC. We're going to turn. I suspect this thing has pooped out something foul. Something that smells like a torpedo, and I'm not interested. Ow. Get off my bow. Thank you. Surprised their battleship hasn't fired yet. It can probably do serious damage to the König Wilhelm. That's a very real concern. Yeah, AP is a good choice here. Turn. This thing didn't torpedo me recently. Destroyed main gun? How dare you? Hit this guy. We got the 15s which load in 40, 46 seconds. Let's uh, push him out of the water. Oh, you just torpedoed something. The 19. Alright. DDs start changing. Yeah, that's nice. That's not anywhere near me, though. Boom. That ought to do it. Um, whoa. Okay, we're fine. What's next? The heavy cruiser. You've selected the heavy cruiser as your target. Oh. Okay, good call. You destroyed a main gun. Destroyed a secondary gun using the DDs. <laughs> Shut up, Google. <laughs> Sorry. My uh, Google Assistant pitched in there. That's a first. 
Huh. So you're the vanguard, huh? With a green level crew. And a few less secondary guns. They're trying to hit the battle cruiser, but they only have half a percent chance to hit. Why? Am I that fast? Yes, 55%. Ship's considered really fast. Let's not care about the heavy cruiser too much. Let's go for the battleship instead. Chance to pen the vanguard? Awful. But bow and stern have options. Look at that! An armored battleship! It has a fore belt, it has an aft belt, it has superstructure armor. What are the British doing? This is quite refreshing. It's not gonna make them survive, but it's quite refreshing. Hmm, this is unfortunate. Go on. You cannot suddenly change the course of the torpedo. The 19 is not gonna like that. That was a bit of a close shave there. Okay, let's turn back. Uh, whatever. You're you're in the turn anyway. The DDs are heading the other way. Let's continue. DDs, high explosive. Torch these things. Half a percent chance to hit from the vanguard. Bulkhead, standard. Crew, cramped crew quarters. Perfect candidate for burning. High explosive on everything. If you see a ship that has low amount of crew, relatively, so low crew quarters, cramped crew quarters as the game calls it, and standard bulkheads, that means that the crew is going to die very quickly. And as the crew dies, they lose more and more and more of these control stats. And that is vital when it comes to your ability to put out fires. It's like they have less and less of their damage control parties available. And because of that, either the ship's going to get overwhelmed by fires quickly, or you just murder the whole crew. Or, well, enough to make them surrender. And in this case, they're already down to 35% crew losses, and they only need to get to 45 to fully surrender. 35-6. 35-8. Extensive fire. Okay, that got him. Then we got the inflexible. Let's see if she is indeed as unflexible as she makes out to be. Many bulkheads and spacious quarters. See, this is the opposite. You're not as likely to burn away the crew. And um, many bulkheads means she's more resilient to fire. So this is when the semi-armor piercing comes in. Also because they have a pretty weak superstructure, aka zero armor. And that means easy to kill the main tower. If you kill the main tower, you get more... Chance to deal damage to the enemy, or at least they get a debuff when it comes to fixing their damage. Just a little bit of background on the game. What are you doing? Because it doesn't look like you're hitting, Koenig. That's more like it. Destroy the torpedo launcher. That's one of the best notifications. Destroyed torpedo. It means you got one less thing to worry about. Flooding, but with many bulkheads, that probably won't kill them. Destroyed secondary tower, excellent. Ricochet, that did not ricochet, in fact, that did almost 4,000 damage. 2% structural, I think they're going to burn up before they flood. Yep, done. So, that's them done. Interesting to see a battleship out here again. Sad for the British that it was a short-lived endeavor. But hey, they built a battleship. That means they spent naval funding. But by god, they still have a fuck ton of money. Ah, another skirmisher. And the Liffey. Battlecruiser York, the Star Class. This is your moment to shine. And I think your 11 inch guns are the perfect fit for this fight. Perfect. This is exactly the type of battlecruiser that I need in this position. She's fast, she's mobile. She's able to reload very quickly, and she reloads in less than 30 seconds. Let's go get them. Here we go. 1.3% chance to hit, that makes sense, because it's quite far away. Sea states, meh. 
Evening daytime. Well, evening. It's not great. But uh, my radar should not really care how much light we have. Just give me a debuff. Yeah, it's minus 7.5%, whereas normal is minus 15%. So my radar rangefinder offsets that quite a bit. They have seen me. Oh, good shot. 11-inch gun dealing rudder damage, which they have quickly resolved. Firing SAP. No, capped. All right. Okay. Proceed. Proceed. That goes my turning. Turning's pretty bad on these. Turn away a little. We don't need all of this speed because we've already reached the target. If she fires back, well, I don't think she could do that much damage. No. The only thing she could do damage with is her torpedo armament. That's my concern. Let's get the DDs involved. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Destroyed main tower. This is what I was talking about before. If the main tower is destroyed, it's like the damage control parties don't have any direction anymore. They don't have officers telling them what to do. And that means you're more likely to take a lot of damage. Hello, DD. What are you doing? I think they're starting to merge into something different. I mean, I've seen ships crash before, but this is something else. Interesting driving there. Would have been nice if I had shells ready at that exact moment, because it would have meant I would have probably hit the DD pretty bad. Which, right now, is turning into a bit of a slippery guy. Hold on, their fire control is also damaged. They might not be able to see me that well. Yeah, no, they can. And they just launched torpedoes at me. Don't do that. Liffy, you're locking your torpedoes in the battle cruiser. Okay. We're ranging about 12 kilometers, 8.6 inches of pen. That's sufficient. No fore, no aft belt, no superstructure armor, no inner belts, nothing. These things are a disaster waiting to happen. York is not particularly accurate. Let's close the distance a bit. Especially since they just torpedoed me. So did the Liffey. Increase the flank. Yep, there it is. Come back. Hmm, should be able to squeeze through. Oh, not if you change course. Ooh, that exploded right in the wake of the battle cruiser. Okay, finish this guy off then. We'll deal with the skirmisher in a minute. Two-inch guns are not firing? These things are packed to the gills with guns. Why are you not shooting? Oh, now you are. Now you are. There you go. Flooding. Minimum bulkheads. Great way to get killed. Flooding again. Thirty-seven, thirty-four, thirty-one, twenty-eight, twenty-five. Yes, this is going to be really quite dead. Okay, skirmisher, what? What's your plan? You're not shooting me, probably because of lack of accuracy. Should have kept my mouth shut. Fine. <laughs> Going to have to educate this light cruiser a little bit. That's what I was hoping for, some flooding. So I can catch them. Your speed should be properly reduced, 23 knots. Yes, more flooding. 
our return. She's still dangerous. Those torps of hers. Ricochet. Yeah, angle is too high. AP then. Oh, see? Still dangerous. Didn't catch that torpedo launcher. Probably should have seen that. Mm, even the two-inch guns have done over 600 damage. That's nice. Come on, Skirmisher. It's been fun, but I do recommend that you abandon ship now. It's been fun, but it's been enough. Surrender. Torpedo launcher destroyed. Second torpedo launcher destroyed. Overwhelming fire. Not yet. Standard crew quarters. No, spacious crew quarters. Standard bulkheads. Misread. Yes. Dead. Okay. Now, what I want to do next, if the game is going to allow it, is get a new ship designed. But I don't always get the final say in that. Because sometimes the game goes, nope, you have to do this mission first. Let's see. Yes, yes. Ah, see? Hindenburg versus Phaeton. Hindenburg is another Oats of Württemberg. Hmm, it's my least favorite ship class. They're really, really bad. Overpriced, under well, not not strictly undergunned, but no. If the Hindenburg makes it out of here intact, I'm going to retire her, because her torpedoes are pretty awful. Her guns are lackluster. They reload too slowly. Her secondary armament's okay with 8.9s, but the rest of it, nah. Do you even have anything on the bow? Yeah, 8.9 and some fours. Same type of light cruiser. Let's see how the Hindi is going to handle this. Less than 1% chance to hit. Fantastic. You want to try that again? Let the 8s do some work first. Maybe slow them down. And then the 15s can knock them out. What are we firing? Base fuse. Okay. So that's decent pen on the HE. My turning circle on these is atrocious. And the torpedo protection is lacking. Come on. Also, the torpedo launchers on these... They just get detected far too soon. And this is with minus 70% detection on these torpedo launchers. Oh, they're turning around. No. Not quite. Normal. Dump all the torps at the starboard side. Have you even hit anything with the 15s? You haven't. Good lord. Look at this. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was a dud torpedo that hit me. What? That's my own torpedo salvo. These things travel at... 35 knots. I'm faster than my own torpedoes. That explains a lot. Yeah. This is not... The type of battle cruiser I want to use anymore. Maybe a new big guns battle cruiser. Like 17 inches or so. Boom! That's more like it. Um semi ballistic shells could do the trick, but I think another HE salvo will flutter out entirely. Damage done. Yeah, the fifteens have redeemed themselves. Sort of. Oh, you're gone. Okay. You're gone. Oh, you're not gone? Oh, go on. Thank you. 32, 30. Too survivable. Which is, unsur well, which is really a surprise for a light cruiser that has no armor. Come on. Destroy torpedo, perfect. 
These things are 229 million. I mean, they're ridiculously expensive for what they do. Nope. Sorry for everybody who liked the Hindenburg and the Württemberg and the Oldenburg, I think they were called. But ship is going to be retired from service. And probably before I'm going to be um, sending in anything new. Or, yeah. Because it's going to take me a long time to build a new battle cruiser. What is your deal? Why can you not even hit them? Give me AP. I'm going to see what this does. Not much. 1800 damage. Oh, there you go. Torpedo detonation aboard the craft. That might do it. Yeah, gone. Okay, that was the last adventure of the Hindenburg. Sad, but it was an interesting experiment. So this one, and the other one, and the other one, they're gone. This should save me some money monthly. Um, two transports in the North Sea. How? What? The bridges don't have power projection nearly as strong as mine. And I'm blockading the Italians, but not the Brits? You need to move your ass into the Irish Sea, my friend. So we got the Channel blockaded. We got the North Sea blockaded, but not the Irish. Right. Okay. Uh, Battlecruisers. Give me the class. That was the battle cruises of the Württemberg. I got three of these. Scrap, scrap, scrap. Okay, 104 million. They were costing me that much? Having discarded of the battle cruisers, I'm thinking the best bet to deal with the Austro-Hungarians is not necessarily a battleship or a battle cruiser. It could just be a heavy cruiser. Because a heavy cruiser has the guns, which are big enough. Um, a heavy cruiser can turn quite nicely, and it should be able to also get to the target fast enough and still be able to be maneuverable. It's a lot of design requirements for this class, and sadly with the German hulls you're quite restricted in what you can do. Let's say when I have a heavy cruiser that's 35 knots. On gas turbines I can push that down to 9300 tons, on diesels it's the same. Gas terms are even cheaper. Interesting. Okay. Give me a better auxiliary engine, shaft, this, this, and oil. Oh, I hope I can find a big enough funnel for this. 46%? That's not great. These things need so much ventilation, it's insane. Here, 20% with just one of these funnels. 33, 79. Okay, it's not stellar and I don't love the design, yet it is what I'm gonna have to do because I cannot put a secondary funnel on the secondary tower. Okay, and main guns, main guns. We got the Mark V 10 inch guns. Mark 5 10 inch guns. These fire every 20 seconds. And that is in their unbuffed condition. So if I do buff them, I should be able to get a ridiculously good turning speed and firing rate at them. 14 seconds. Turning circle 475. That's not great. Yet keep in mind that these guys have Torpedo Blister 4. So they can shrug off 50% of torpedo damage and 40% of flooding. Give them a Citadel, give them an Anti-Flood. Give them TNT, give them 2 Powder. And the enemy Heavy Cruisers... Mm, this has so much likeliness to bounce off. It does more pen. Like a load of pen. But your chance to ricochet is just so high. Let's go for semi-ballistic. At shorter ranges, let's say 5,000 to 7,000 meter range, it's 18 inches. Good enough. 
And then balance the shells out. Let's see. Give him two inches of superstructure. Give him uh, a belt of seven inches. Citadel is quite large. Give him five inches of main deck armor. Give him 16 inches of armor. Of, sorry, 14 and a half on the guns. Five there. Do I increase these? Now they can fire every 14.9 seconds. 13 seconds, it's fine. We're going to go with 14.9, and if I go for 20% longer barrels, we're looking at 22 seconds. No. This is good enough. This is a big gun. If it suits the campaign, it's good range, decent amount of damage, and it should be capable of eliminating the Austro-Hungarian fleet fairly swiftly. Secondary-wise, I can't really fit a lot of 5 inches on this ship. So I'm thinking 4s are more likely. 89 million? Wait. 77? 95. Okay, they're gonna... Get, they're just going to be expensive. Period. It's that simple. Move this. Move this. Move this. It's better. Push this further forward. Can we do a 360? Yes. It's a 360 turret. Good. Good, good, good. That is going to allow for a faster target acquisition. Um, yeah, I think it's a pretty good ship. I can't really make it sleeker without tossing the 4-inch overboard. Let's not make these bigger. Oh, they don't want to fit anywhere else. Okay, three inches as well. As much as I like the German design, I am kind of looking forward to the next campaign because it just means that I can have a bit more flexibility with these ships. Oh, the ship is getting too heavy on the stern. Does this still turn? Yes. Good. I still have 2,000 tons left. What am I going to put that on? Speed? Uh, not that much. 35 to 37 is not that, not that significant. But dropping that is... So let's go for range. Generate more favorable missions. And I suppose a bit more armor. Like 10 inches. And three, yes, and 15. Now we're gonna get up to four inches of fore and aft belt. Yes, quite nice. A bit more on the fore belt to balance her out. Wow, because the fore and the aft belt are so small, you can get a lot of armor on these things. Uh, reduce this, there. I like it. I like it. You are the first Bismarck class. That's a bit presumptuous. Bit presumptuous. Uh, no, you're the Rhineland class. After the battleship that we lost in the Mediterranean. Save. Built time? Yes, yes, I know it's a modern tower. Thank you. Game. How long is this going to take to build? That's what I want to know. Fucking bug. Okay, we'll just have to look. Oh, here, 19 months. We'll just have to look and build a bunch of these. They will also make excellent, excellent escort ships for the rest of the fleet. They're going to be very useful in that regard. Okay, the Rhineland class. Let's build uh, 10. 50 million a month. But I'm saving a lot, so I can still afford that. Ooh, that's a nice little convoy you got there. Um... Yeah, let's take it down. Last bit of the episode, take down a convoy with the Royal Sovereign. And 20 transport ships. I think we're going to have to split up. Let's say... Maybe after this... No, the CL is too good to deal with the CA. You two. Normal formation, go. Enemies northwest, we're going to go over there. You're going to go over there. You're going to go over there. Let's go take him out. 
Here we go. We're taking some shots at my light cruiser. And they are just about in range to start returning the favor. Gazelle. If you'd be so kind. Sea state. Excellent. Okay, so that's where the heavy cruiser is at. It came from over there. There. That's where you guys are going to head off to. Now, again, try not to kill the heavy cruiser too quick. Lest we find ourselves without a convoy to kill. <laughs> Damage to the main tower. With this volume of fire, I'm going to have to silence the guns pretty quick. Even a heavy cruiser can't sustain losses like these for very long. Looks like they're already retreating, in fact. Turn a bit. Rotor damaged. Destroyed secondary. Got a decent amount of fighters raging. I'd like to see torpedo destroyed. Maybe. Destroyed funnel. Come on, identify it. I need to know if I need to stop firing. Which is still weird. No, they're fine. They're fine. Okay, carry on. Where's the convoy at? 20 transports here. Okay, you three stay with the badly damaged cruiser. But don't shoot. Nobody shoot. There. Badly damaged. These cadets have no idea what hit them. <laughs> Engine out. Funnel out. Secondary tower destroyed. Rudder damaged. Welcome to the high seas. Ooh. Snacks. Look at this. The sheep. So many sheep. I need to sink 100%. Gladly. Gazelle. It's a bit weird to have a gazelle go after a convoy like this, but hey. I don't mind. You guys... Yeah, the gazelle's two knots faster, which over the long haul does matter, as you can see. Kind of makes just that bit of difference. That's the 7.9ers. These are ranging in 12. Where's Diego? Can't have you completely lose him. Yes, rudder damage, flooding, flooding. We're engaging two different targets here. You guys open up. Three inches. There. Three inches are doing a lot of work for me here. More so than the three point than the, the seven point nines. Look at the gazelle. Just casually butchering twenty transports. If these crews need anything else to do, I still need more sailors for my transport fleet. You shoot three times and it just explodes. Look at all this. This is a graveyard. Dead. What are you guys doing? Seriously, they haven't hit me once? Who's torping? You torping? No, you're not torping. We've already killed 70%. We can open up again. 80%. The gazelle has done 133,000 damage. Jesus. DD's 40,000. What the hell? Yeah, this is the last one. The lead merchant vessel. You guys done with the cruiser yet? 
Mission complete. Okay. Now we can wipe out the cruiser, which is down to 30% already? I told you to open up like a moment ago. And you just took 25% off of their structural integrity in a matter of minutes. Wow. Deadly. These boys, deadly. And this is armor piercing. Semi armor piercing shells against a heavy cruiser. Oh man. They should have enough secondaries to deal with this. They just don't have the superstructure armor to survive it. And the cadet level of crew is not helping either. With less than a percent chance to hit. Everybody turn. A few torps here and there. Buoyancy is dropping. The other guys are still dodging. It's fine. Cancel dodge orders now. Come back. Oh, there goes the Sovereign. Sunk. Flooded. Well done. Hopefully this will at least take another chunk out of the British economy. But it's just going so slowly. We're going to need to do something a bit more aggressive to get these guys to... Well, not to get them to surrender, because they keep trying that. I don't strictly need them to surrender, I just need them gone. British. They're just about as big as my economy. What the fuck? And the Italians just keep growing. <laughs> How? Uh... Okay, well, that'll be it for this episode. I have a naval prestige of 1,423. That is like a lot. So, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon for the next one.